Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. We are dental practice brokers. I was a dentist for 25 years and doing this now brokerage for 14 years. Today's topic is seller shocked, practice sold, dental practice sold on the first day of the on the market. Buyers perplexed. What's next? So we'll get into what happened here. As you know, we now have 10 employees. We're in 22 states and uh, working every day except Christmas and Easter. So call us. We're available 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. East Coast time. And our phone number is 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. Or you can get us on nationwide dentalpracticebrokers.com. Remember, everything you're hearing today is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. Also, if you're thinking about selling to a DSO, call us because we work with them all the time. There's been a lot of consolidation changes. We keep up with those changes. And they often pay our uh, commission. So there's no commission to you most of the time. Also, when you work with us, I'll get your legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing. So call us. We've done that a number of times and we'll, we'll get it together for you. Um, all right. Now, so what happens here? So the buy, the seller puts it on the market for top dollar, 86% of gross, somewhere around there. Had the first showing first time people were in there at first the, the second buyer third buyer says I want it paid full price 86% of gross buyer was pre-approved buyer gave us a letter of intent buyer was so motivated they wanted a letter of intent before they came and they wanted to put down a small refundable let's call it processing fee deposit so we gave them all the instructions. Sure enough, there was second or third person in. They saw it. They liked it. Now, this is one of the best buyers. A buyer that has been uh, was working towards buying a practice and it wasn't their fault. The deal fell apart. Happens all the time. But, you know, when you like something and you're interested and you're just starting, it's 50-50 that you're going to get it together. That the deal's going to go through before you send a letter of intent. So they were disappointed, but that's your best buyer. A buyer that was prepped, signed a non-disclosure, had the financing in place, ready to go. And disappointed because I think the seller changed their mind. Because sellers get like that. And that's what happened. But also, simultaneously, the seller never thought it would sell on the first day. And they were like shocked. They didn't know how to react. They went cold. In other words, I couldn't reach them. For 48 hours, there was no contact on the seller. I mean, how could that be? No contact, they should think they should be excited. But no contact. Seller just dropped out of sight. And um, I didn't know what to make of it. So the buyer... Hold on now. The buyer's starting to panic because you're approaching the end of 48 hours. The buyer's trying to figure out, you know, what's going on here? Okay, so bear with me. I'm backing up, team. Uh, so buyer's trying to figure out what's going on. Buyer's starting to get a little nervous because 48 hours had passed, no contact from the seller. I think what happened is the seller was just shocked and wasn't prepared. All of a sudden, your life is changing. It's the practice you worked out all your life, and it, it's coming to an end. Suddenly, a happy end, and you're getting top dollar for it, but you're, sometimes you're not ready for that. You figured you'd ease into it, you know, see some of the favorite patients you want, fit them in. Do, hey, you get a hot buyer that's paying 86% of gross that wants to move on it right away. That's it. There's no time for second guessing. Now, what happens sometimes, which is a huge error, some of the sellers think, well, if I got top dollar, I can get more. And my response to that is no. You just happen to find a motivated buyer who was ready at the time. We can't play games and ask for more than the asking price we put down. 
buyer came in and put full asking price, 86% of gross. That's it. You don't screw around. Now, what's going to happen to the other two, three buyers that I think want it also? Well, this buyer put it down a, a letter of intent, a non-binding letter of intent. It's a goodwill type thing. They want it. Okay? So what we do in those circumstances, we keep the buyers, the other buyers, in second position. I explain to them, they're giving full price. So there's not a lot of negotiation. And we're not, the seller has instructed us, I don't want bidding war. That is, if somebody comes in and pays it, I don't want to go back to another buyer and say, oh, you pay 10, 15, 20. And that's, that generally doesn't work. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, because that second buyer that really wants it, they offer more and then they change their mind. Then uh, it, it just doesn't work out. We stick with the first buyer, but we let the second buyer know. We say, hey, listen, you're in second position. If anything happens to the first buyer, you'll be there. And if there was a third buyer, we'll put them in third position. And uh, But we're not shopping the deal because it got full price. That's it. You got full price. There's nothing more to talk about. This is a nice buyer. The buyer was already pre-approved before. The buyer had gone through another deal. It didn't work out. So you have a very motivated buyer. As far as the seller, you got to let it go. Just let it go. And if it happened too fast and you weren't ready for it, I understand what you're saying, but that's that's the way it is. It did, did happen fast because it's a great practice, a specialty type practice. You had a high price on it. You got your high price. Don't start thinking, oh, maybe I can get more. No, this buyer is ready. And obviously, I you know talked to the buyer, said you got to move on. If you like it, just move on it. That's what the buyer did. They just moved on it. They liked it. They moved on it. The deal is, that's a deal. The other people will wait. They can look at other practices. We'll keep them posted what's going on. 50-50 chance that somebody's going to buy it before they look at it. When they put letter of intent, 70% chance it's going through. They get full bank approval through underwriting. 80% chance it's going through. Contracts are finished and now signed. You got 85-90%. And then you're moving towards closing is set up. You got a 95% that that deal's going through. We always leave a small percentage because you never know what happened. The building can get burned down. The seller gets cold feet. The buyer gets cold feet. Something happened with the financing. Anything can happen. So you always leave about 5% on the table that may not go through. And you keep your other buyers uh, informed. Hey, it's not over. It is not over. When we're five minutes after the closing, I'll let you know. Call me. And maybe it'll be over, maybe it won't, but you have to be prepared. I've had deals where the buyer walked out to go take a look at the office. Say, want another look at the office. We're at the closing table. Monies are transferred from the bank in the attorney's account, ready to be dispersed. And this guy, oh, this idiot, I still remember this story. He goes to see the office and heads south. He went south. He just kept going, never came back. Because somebody told him, oh, we think it's a Medicaid office. It's just an idiot, lost at last minute. And never work with that guy again. Never. Uh, that did happen. So you have to leave a little bit on the table that something may happen. All right? We're looking good, team. Hit the subscribe button if you want to hear more. we got a bunch of them coming out. Remember, January 5th, 2025, we got a cruise going out. And then I think we got another cruise in January 26th. I think we're going to do it every year. Seminar cruise. Uh, you know, we're just going to have a blast. Have professionals there. You'll get CE credit. Check it out. Thank you, bye.